Looking at all the recent videos on backup for World Backup Day inspired me to do an update on my backup strategy as well as do a quick review on how to restore data. If you want to know more about what I do and how I keep my data protected, then definitely watch the rest of this video. And of course, if you haven't done so, please hit subscribe and hit that like button if you find this video useful. In this video, we're going to cover several parts of a basic backup and restore strategy that I use, which is centered around QNAP's Hybrid Backup Sync 3. We'll cover the entire spectrum of data protection, including backup to a local device, data sync, and backup to cloud services. Of course, doing backups is critical, but we also need to cover on how to restore all or part of our data in the event that something happens. Before we get started on how to do this, let's first understand the key foundation of backups and how we can best utilize this 3-2-1 backup strategy in a real-life application. You may have heard the term 3-2-1, but in practical terms, all it means is having at least three copies of your data, two of which are, are local but on different devices, and at least one copy off-site. The challenge with this strategy is that we don't always have the room or the resources to have three copies of everything. So the first thing that I do is to try and categorize the data based on the level of importance. These categories are what I use, and you may have different needs, so you'll have to modify this to suit your particular situation. In my case, I use three different categories. The first is the most important items. Irreplaceable photos, financial documents, and other personal data that we just can't afford to lose. This, of course, is different for everyone, and you'll have to decide what falls into that category. For example, for me, photo collection is not replaceable, so all of my photos are located on major folders on my NAS. In this category, I want to make sure that I have a 321 backup strategy and have a minimum of three copies of that available. Later in this video, I'll show you what I do and the services and devices that I use. The second category is kind of important data, but not super critical. In other words, this is stuff that's kind of general purpose. You kind of want to keep it, but if something were to happen to it, it wouldn't be necessarily devastating. And lastly, non-critical data such as movies. This is a category that I don't back up at all, and I just rely on RAID knowing that if there's a major hardware failure and I lose two or more drives, that the data will be gone. Again, these are decisions that you have to make based on your particular needs. The main reason that I break this up in these categories is that many of us use our NAS to store everything. And with the ever-increasing capacity of these devices, it gets increasingly hard to maintain three copies of everything unless your needs demand it and the budget allows for it. In this first section, we'll cover how to set up a backup, set up a folder sync, as well as discuss when to use one over the other. And then we'll finish up with an overview of my own personal strategy and the exact configuration. Of course, you'll need to have HBS3 installed already, and if you haven't already done so, then go to the App Store and install it. Once you launch the app, we're going to go ahead and select Backup Now and create a new backup job. This is where we're going to select one or more folders that we want to back up, and then select Next when you're done. Here we have to select our destination. There's a couple of limitations you need to be aware of. Backups are limited to four types of destinations. A remote NAS, an expansion unit, a USB drive, and cloud services. For this example, we're going to select a remote NAS, and then select My Backup NAS, and then the actual destination folder that we're going to use as our destination, and then select Next. Now we have to configure the scheduler option and add a, a new schedule. You can have up to 30 different schedules, which is far more than what I need. For this example, I'll set up a weekly schedule to run on Tuesday at 2 a.m. and then click OK when we're done. There's a few options that we need to decide on. First is whether or not we want version management. Typically, version management is important as it maintains different versions of your backup so that in the event something happens, you can always restore the file from an earlier version. Since this is just an example, I'm going to go ahead and leave that off. If you do choose to use it, which I would probably recommend you do, think about how many versions that you need to keep. In my opinion, 100 is a bit excessive, and of course it'll take up more space, but you'll have to decide what balance works for you. 
Next is data integrity checks. This is an option that analyzes your actual backups and attempts to correct any corruption that's inside. And be aware that it will add significant time to your backups, depending on how you set this option. I usually do not set this option, so for this example, I'll go ahead and skip it. This next section is policies. This is where we have a couple options and a couple choices to make. For the most part, you can leave everything on the default, but you do need to consider whether or not you want client-side encryption. This option actually encrypts your files on the NAS during the backup process before they're transferred to the destination folder. For example, if you're backing up an expansion unit or most likely to a USB drive, you'll want to encrypt that data before storing it on the USB drive. That way, if the drive gets lost or stolen, um, no one can get a hold of your data. For this example, I'll set the client-side encryption on and then create a password for the backup. The only other option I set, and this is totally optional and is dependent on your own particular configuration, is to di disable taking a snapshot. And the reason I do that is personally, I don't use snapshots, so I automatically turn this off. But if you are using snapshots, this is normally what you want to do. So I would leave the default. That's pretty much all there is to setting up the, our first backup. Before we get into the syncing part, let's talk about recovering data from your backup. There's two basic ways of restoring data from your QNAP. The first way is to use HBS3, and the second is to use their utility. To restore from HBS3, select the triple dots in the upper right hand corner and select Restore. And then select the folder or folders that you want to restore. You can optionally select a restore folder to go back to the original location, or you can select one or more folders to restore to a different location. Once you've configured your restore locations, hit next, and the rest of it leave as default since we're not creating a restore schedule or anything like that. When you're done, click restore, and the folder will be restored. Keep in mind that HBS3 only restores folders. So whatever folders you have selected will be restored. This limitation brings us to the other way that you can restore data. QNAP also has a utility called QDDUP Extract Tool, which is a free tool available for Windows, Mac, and Ubuntu that you can download from their website. After you download and install the tool, launch it and select Browse, and point to the QDFF file in your backup location and select Folder. As this backup was encrypted, you'll be prompted for the password, and after a few seconds, you'll be able to see the main interface of the utility. On the left, you'll see your different backup days, and if you click on the right arrow, you can start to drill down and see the until you get to the actual files that you want to restore. Once you locate those files, you can hit Extract, and you'll be prompted to make sure that you select a location that has sufficient space. Click OK and select the restore location. If you're restoring files to the same location, just find it and select that location and then decide how you want to handle file conflicts. Either replace the file or skip and then your restore will begin. Some suggestions when you're doing a file restore. When you have to restore a file that's missing, then you can go ahead and put it in the same location. However, if you're trying to restore some corrupted files, you might want to restore to a temporary location, review the files, make sure they work, test them, and then copy, copy them over to the location that you actually want to put them in. This way you can make sure that the version you restored is actually the one you want and the one that solves your problem. Now that we've talked about backups, let's talk about syncing and when you should use one over the other. Setting a sync job is very similar to setting up a backup job with a couple of differences. The main difference is that the sync does not dedupe, compress, or alter the files in any way. And it makes an exact duplicate copy of your files, which can be accessed directly from that sync location without the use of any software or utility. In addition, the location types are a little bit more flexible as you can sync to other computers, SMB servers such as Unraid or TrueNAS, in addition to all the same services that the backups can use. One big caution though, if you're syncing private data that is stored on an encrypted drive or volume, you need to make sure that your sync location is also encrypted since you can't encrypt data on the fly. For example, if you're syncing data to another NAS, make sure that the folder you're syncing to is also encrypted 
or if you're syncing to Unraid, make sure that your SMB share is encrypted as well. Otherwise, the data will be in the open and it'll be at risk. Before we set up our first sync job, let's take a quick look at storage spaces. I typically set this first um, in the very beginning to make it easier, but you can actually do it at any time. If we go to the bottom tab, this is where we're going to set up all of our storage spaces, which are actually your devices or services. If you look at my tab, you'll see a local NAS, a remote NAS, and a cloud backup. I did a video on the Wasabi cloud backup that I use if you want more information on that service. So let's add one more storage space that we can use, and we'll create a storage space using my Unraid server. To set it up for the first time, select Create, then select Remote SMB Server. Next, give it a name and type in the IP address of your Unraid server or TrueNAS server, whichever you're using as well as your username and password. Now this will be the password for that specific share that you're using, so depending on how you have your configuration, followed by the share name. Most likely the drop-down list won't work with Unraid, I'm not sure about TrueNAS, so you'll have to type it in manually, type the name of the share. Once you're done, hit Create, and you should now have a new storage space. So now let's create our first sync job using the SMB server that we just created. Let's go back. To the sync tab select create and we'll add a one-way sync job from here we'll select the remote smb server and as you can see when we clicked on it the server that we just created now appears if you have more than one smb server that you've set up you should see them all listed here so pick the one we want hit select then here's where we'll define what folder or folders we're going to sync let's add a paired folder from the nas side and then select and select the folder on the Unraid side. Add the source folder from the NAS and the folder from the SMB in the listing. Repeat to add more folders if you need to do more multiple folders, and then hit Next. Create a schedule much the same way that you did for the backup. Select Schedule, add a new schedule, select the type and the frequency and the time. You can leave the rest as the default, except deciding whether or not or to disable snapshot, just as we discussed before. I'm not using snapshots, so I'm gonna go ahead and disable this. You can leave the rest of the defaults and select create to complete the sync job. It's pretty much all you have to do to create a sync job. It's virtually identical to creating a backup job. So the big question is, when do I use a backup and when do I use a sync? And what's the pros and cons? For starters, backups offer a couple of benefits but they also have some drawbacks. Backups offer you the dedupe, the compression, and the big one is client-side encryption, which allows you to encrypt before transferring. But the cost is you need the utility or HBS3 to restore any files. In addition, the backup destination can only be to another NAS, to a cloud service, or to a USB drive. Sync, on the other hand, copies the entire folder so if something happens to your NAS or you're not even able to get to your NAS, you can still get to your data simply by logging into that particular location and access your files directly just as if they were local to you. On the downside, encryption is not supported, so the destination that you're copying to needs to be already encrypted. And the files are not deduped or compressed, so the destination will use up a little bit more space, exactly the same amount of space that you're using for your native file storage. So which one should you use? Probably the answer in most cases is both. If the only backup destination that you have is a USB drive and a cloud service possibly, I would use the backup feature to go to either both of those locations or backup and encrypt to the USB drive and file sync to the cloud. Alternatively, you can just use the backup to both locations and not use the file sync. As long as you remember the limitations of each, then you can make your own decision on what works for you. For me, I use predominantly file syncing. I only have one backup set and the rest of the stuff is, is uh, file sync because I'm going from encrypted to encrypted folders. And we'll get more into that in a little bit. Okay, now that we've seen how this is done, let me quickly go over what I do and why I do it this way, as well as the services and devices that I use. There's really no absolute way of doing things, and I'm sharing this with you in hopes that it'll provide some additional ideas that you can use in your own backup strategies. In my particular situation, all of my data is stored on one main NAS, 
with the exception of my movie collection, which resides on my Unraid server. I use five different backup locations based on the data and the importance of the data, as well as the size of the data. I back up to USB drives, expansion units, remote NAS units, as well as a Wasabi cloud. Looking at this chart, you get the idea of how I break up the data. The two encrypted volumes are being synced to an encrypted volume on my remote NAS. Synced to Wasabi Cloud and then backed up to the USB drive using client-side encryption. This offers me three copies of the data, one easily accessible via any location as it's cloud-based should I be away or unable to access things remotely. It's synced to an encrypted volume on my remote NAS which offers me easy access to my files should there be a hardware failure on my primary NAS. And lastly, I back it up using HBS3 using client-side encryption to a USB drive just for redundancy. This is a SSD USB drive that I only back up real critical data to that particular drive. Also, my locations are based on size and practicality. For example, my critical encrypted data and my photos are relatively small, so a USB and a cloud service make perfect sense. However, other data that might contain a lot of video files, such as what I classified as important, can be quite large. So syncing that with a remote NAS that has 16 terabytes or an Unraid server that has 32 terabytes makes a lot more sense that that, as that data doesn't really need to be encrypted. And lastly, the non-critical data I mainly sync to my Unraid server. So let's take a quick look at a few jobs I created for backup as well as sync. First is the backup to the USB drive using client-side encryption. This is one of several copies of my critical data. Next we'll switch over and cover some of the sync jobs I use. First on the list is a job that syncs various data folders to my Unraid server. And below that is the first of many sync jobs that sync to my remote NAS. It syncs folders from my main NAS to non-encrypted folders of my remote NAS. Next is one of the encrypted volumes that actually syncs data from my main NAS to the remote NAS. In other words, each NAS has an encrypted volume and all the data from the encrypted volume of the primary NAS is synced over to an encrypted volume of the backup NAS. So even though client-side encryption isn't supported, each, each NAS has its own encrypted volume. Next, we have the first sync job that actually copies data to the cloud. This particular job copies the same data from the encrypted volume that I did earlier on my secondary NAS, and it copies it to the Wasabi cloud. I'm not gonna go through every single job that I've set up, because I think you kind of get the idea of my strategy of picking locations based on several factors, such as size and importance. There is no one-size-fits-all solution, so if you only have USB drives, then consider separating them and copy your critical data to two or more. And consider adding a low-cost cloud service like Wasabi or Backblaze or whatever you're comfortable with. The key takeaway is that you always need to use some kind of encryption for your personal data, whether it's client-side encryption when you do your backups, encrypted volumes on your NAS, or encrypted cloud services. Just make sure you know that your personal data is protected. The other takeaway is always have multiple copies. Even if you don't use as many devices as I do, there are inexpensive cloud services and a variety of low-cost USB devices you can get, or even repurpose some of the older devices you may have kicking around the house. However you choose to start, at least get started. As the landscape is changing and we don't just have to worry about hardware failures anymore, but also viruses, ransomware, and natural disasters. Having been a victim of data loss before and having to evacuate my home a couple years ago, my approach at least helps me sleep better. Anyway, that's it for today's video. So if you found this useful, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe and hit those notifications so you'll know when there's new content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.